welcome, I'm Stash Butler, and here's what happened this week. Taiwan has marked 65 years since the beginning of the second Taiwan Strait crisis. During the crisis, Taiwan held on to key islands, preventing a Chinese takeover. But the threat of invasion has not gone away, a fact that was in the background of this year's commemoration. John Van Trieste has more. President Tsai Ing-wen and presidential candidate Hou Youyi exchange brief words. Tsai's Democratic Progressive Party and Hou's Kuomintang are often bitterly at odds. But this is the sort of occasion where country comes before party. The two politicians are on the island of Jinmen, governed from Taiwan but within sight of the Chinese coast. Wednesday marked 65 years since China launched an attack on the island, which it hoped would be a stepping stone to Taiwan itself. Despite intense shelling, Jinmen held out. And this conflict, the second Taiwan Strait crisis, ended. Tsai and Ho came in person to pay respects to those who died in the attacks. But the threat of a Chinese invasion has never gone away. And with just months until the next presidential election, Tsai Ing-wen's opponents continue to take aim at her China policy. Threats from Beijing increased drastically since Tsai took office in 2016. At a memorial in Taipei, Taiwan People's Party candidate Ke Wenzhe had this to say. Now, over half a century after the second Taiwan Strait crisis, the question animating the country is the future of Taiwan's relationship with China. Klein Wang and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Now, a veteran of the crisis, Yao Yunlong, spoke to Taiwan Plus about the part he played in defending the islands of Jinmen. 65 years ago on August 23rd, China's People's Liberation Army launched a major offensive against the Taiwan-governed islands of Jinmen, just kilometers from the Chinese mainland. It was the height of the Cold War, with tensions at their peak between communist China and US-aligned countries, including Taiwan. Some 90,000 soldiers were packed onto the tiny islands of Jinmen to guard against attack. Of those, over half were veterans who'd come to Taiwan after the Chinese Civil War. The rest were native Taiwanese conscripts. Yao Yunlong was one of those who faced the PLA bombardment in 1958. He was conscripted into the Republic of China Army in 1941. He retreated to Taiwan just before Mao Zedong's communists captured his hometown. Like most Chinese soldiers who came back with the defeated nationalists to Taiwan, Yao believed that one day they would take back control of China from the communists. He was sent to Jinmen in 1956. At the time of the Second Taiwan Strait Crisis, he served as the political officer with the 9th Division in Jinmen. Yao was stationed on Dadan Island, the island closest to the Chinese mainland. That meant it bore the brunt of the Chinese artillery bombardment. As political officer, Yao was charged with maintaining order among the thousands of new conscripts from Taiwan. Yao survived the second straight crisis and returned to Taiwan. 
He retired in 1973 and married an indigenous Taiwanese woman. He's now 100 years old, but is still active on the internet, where he shares his experiences of war and his views on politics and philosophy. He says seeing Russia's invasion of Ukraine has reminded him once more of the horrors of war. Sixty-five years after Yao and thousands of others battled for their lives on Jinmen, the specter of war haunts Taiwan once more. But Yao's biggest wish after a century of life is that the peace he fought so hard for can continue long after he's gone. Taiwan's been expelled from a Central American cross-governmental organization. Members of the Central American Parliament, or Parlesen, based in Guatemala, voted to remove Taiwan as an observer and install China in its place. Taiwan's foreign ministry has protested the decision, saying it's part of China's efforts to marginalize Taiwan in international organizations. The ministry has chosen to withdraw from Parlesen immediately. And Paraguay is one of the world's biggest exporters of beef. But because of its diplomatic recognition of Taiwan, it's unable to export to the world's biggest market, China. Sally Jensen was in Paraguay's capital speaking to members of the livestock industry to find out more. Cattle ranching is in Isidro Medina's blood. He's the third generation of his family to tend to this small ranch in the Luque region of Paraguay near the capital Asuncion. Beef is big business in Paraguay, but Medina is in the minority among the country's ranchers. All of what he produces here he sells locally, but for him there's little security at such a small scale. La posibilidad que nos queda los pequeños productores vender domésticamente. Y todo el sueño del trabajador es vender afuera, que sería más bueno el ingreso económico y así, pero son grandes productores Paraguay exports around 60% of its beef, making it one of the world's top 10 exporters. And almost all of that is shipped to just five markets, Chile, Russia, Israel, Brazil and Taiwan. This year, Paraguay hopes to increase its exports to Taiwan from 37,000 tonnes last year to 50,000 tonnes, a huge increase from 2,000 tonnes less than 10 years ago. The cows here on Isidro's farm are literally on the other side of the world from Taiwan. This is an area dominated by Paraguay's beef industry. But the surrounding countries, Brazil, Argentina and Uruguay, ship their cows to a much bigger market, China. China is a major importer of beef from South America, with Brazil and Argentina accounting for almost 70% of its imports. Yet Paraguay exports comparatively little to China, whose major beef buyers, big state-owned enterprises, stick to the One China policy, which claims that Taiwan is part of China. As Paraguay does not adhere to that notion, they won't buy from here. Paraguay has recognized Taiwan as its own entity for over six decades. It's one of only 13 countries to have diplomatic relations with Taiwan and the only one in South America. Paraguay's new president, Santiago Peña, has pledged to maintain these relations despite pressure from his country's agricultural sector, which wants to open lucrative Chinese markets to soybeans and beef. Y vuelvo a repetir, lo bueno sería si podamos vender eh, a China y, y seguir con nuestra, nuestras relaciones, eh, relaciones diplomáticas con, con Taiwán. Lo bueno era estar bien con los dos países. Peña has said that Paraguay, quote, would love more trade with China, but adds that the small country cannot rely on a single market and risk being flooded with Chinese goods. Having a closer collaboration with Taiwan put us closer on a path to develop an industrial sector that we will have it if we have our relation with China. <laughs> The industry's biggest players, the meat packers, say that Taiwan should create more demand for their produce. Porque hoje o Paraguai é um país amigo de Taiwan. Então é muito importante que Taiwan corresponda com isso. Dê mais preferência à carne paraguaia. Paraguay's meat packers want beef to remain the country's economic driving force. But for smaller domestic suppliers like Medina, diversification is essential to make ends meet. 
He now makes more money selling milk from his dairy cows and participating in horse shows. And as Paraguay looks toward growing its beef export industry to Taiwan, for its smallest ranchers, the dream of selling abroad remains a world away from reality. Scott Huang and Sally Jensen for Taiwan Plus. Now back in Asia, a new prime minister has been named in Thailand, just as an old one returned after almost two decades in exile. Now the country has an official leader again. Joyce Tsung looks at what we can expect to see in Thailand's political future. Prime Minister, you want to be? People's Prime Minister. A media frenzy to catch a glimpse of Thailand's Prime Minister elect, Seta Tavisin. On Tuesday, the 60 year old property tycoon from the populist Pua Thai Party secured majority backing from Thailand's parliament to be the country's next leader. Seta did not formally address the media when leaving parliament, instead, opting to give a brief statement at the party's headquarters. <laughs> Seta's victory ends months of political uncertainty. After the unexpected electoral victory of the Progressive Move Forward Party threatened to weaken the political influence of Thailand's military. Seta and his party, Pua Thai, had originally joined Move Forward and their pledge to de-link military power in politics. But after the failed PM bid of Pitalim Jaranrat, his party opted to join hands with former military-linked rivals instead. During the campaign, he kept telling that he's not going to join a coalition or, you know, govern the country together with the pro-military uh, political party, but in the last couple of days, he's already he's already released sort of our, the speech that so this is the only way that can support Pu Thai to be a government. For some Thai voters who wanted to see democratic change, Sita's road to power is seen as a betrayal of what was promised. Just hours after his win, the hashtag #NotMyPM was trending on X, the site formerly known as Twitter. But for others, a sense of relief that perhaps the business mogul can usher in economic prosperity for a country whose all-important tourism industry was badly hit during the pandemic. <laughs> but just as Thailand brings in a new prime minister, the return of the divisive Thaksin Shinawat, the founder of Setas Pua Thai Party and an ousted former PM, may have been the day's highlight. During his five-year rule in 2001, Thaksin gained popularity with supporters in rural communities. They are often referred to as red shirts for donning the party's colors. But after almost two decades in self-imposed exile, avoiding corruption charges, Thaksin was jailed upon arrival to serve an eight-year sentence, which may be shortened now that his party is heading the government. The 74-year-old has since been moved to hospital during his first night in jail after experiencing high blood pressure and insomnia, according to local media. The Red Church, they have a close connection. They love Chinawat families a lot. It's really difficult for Thaksin to, to leave Phu Thai alone and then leave politics. I, I don't think so. He will be playing a role in Phu Thai and politics, but behind the scenes. As Thailand ushers in its 30th prime minister, some who are familiar with the country's political history may now be feeling a sense of deja vu. James Lin and Joyce Zen for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching Here's What Happened. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally today, we leave you with images of two newborn leopard cubs in the central Polish city of Plotsk. I'm Stash Butler. Take care and see you next week.